Let the church say amen. Thank God for allowing us to be here another night. Thank God for all that he's doing in all of our lives. Thank God for just being good. Amen. All by himself. We certainly want to say welcome to all of you that are joining us via YouTube, tuning in on social media. Uh, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Uh, God has a word for us, and we just want to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Um, so we are welcome. We just want to welcome you all back in the service. Welcome all of you that are here tonight, and we just thank God. Amen. Our, our scripture reading is going to come out of First Kings chapter 17. We're going to just read verses 1 through 7, and we're going to be going pretty much through the whole uh, verses 1 through 16, actually, uh, a little bit later as we go through. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. Amen. The Bible says, And Elisha the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gil Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, he says, There shall not be dew nor rain. Wow. Listen what he says. He says, There shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. This is what he's saying. He's saying, uh, you all, Baal, they were serving Baal, and we'll talk about them serving Baal a little bit later, but they were serving Baal, and who was the rain god of that time. And so now Ahab was serving the rain god, so now, now uh, Elijah goes to him and he says, look, we're going to show you who the real god is. And he says, it won't be any rain for three and a half years until I speak that it shall rain. That's, that's pretty strong going before the king, Amen. Look at what he says in verse 3. Uh, verse 2, I'm sorry. And this is real important. And what happened? The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, I, I'm telling you, when God speaks, stuff will happen. Amen. Look what he says. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Sharif that is before Jordan. Okay. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Right? So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Sharif that is before Jordan. And guess what happened? And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Amen? And it came to pass after a while that the brook did what? The brook did what? The brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land now for, for three years. Amen. Just for, just for a little while tonight, uh, I want to I talk about when your brook runs dry. What, what do you do when, you, when your brook runs dry? You know, all of us, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, have experienced some inescapable dry brooks. What, you know, where, where you know, when, what do you do when your dry season arrives? How do you respond to God when, when, when what you had was enough ain't enough no more? Or what you had ain't coming in like it used to come in and it ain't doing what it used to do, you know? And so I want to continue to expound on our theme, serving more in 2024. But I want to look at the, uh, uh, Elijah here in this text and I want to talk about him a little bit. And uh, I, was, I was reading where the late Dr. E.B. Hill uh, in his book, uh, The Victory in Jesus, he talked about how it's an exciting time for Christians uh, when, when those rare days when God does everything we want him to do. You know those days when you can tell God you want and he gives it to you? Well, you can tell God you need and he supplies that need right then. You know, you know, you know, you know, when, we, you know, when God answers our prayers. Right then, right there, you pray and God answers and then you know when you should uh, you know when he when we should pray or when he should we tell him God I want my prayer answered right now you know and and we tell him you know uh, God I know what's best for me and you know you tell God all this stuff well let me bust your bubble it just don't happen like that is it all right uh, you know I hate to raid on your parade but it, you know it, it just don't happen the word teaches us that God doesn't necessarily do it the way we want it done or when we want it done he don't act like we think he ought to act amen anybody ever just thought you know Lord I sure do think you ought to do it this way and I see this and I see that but God don't do none of that is that right oftentimes you know, we got to learn how to trust God and we got to learn how to serve God when the going gets tough 
What do we do when the brook dries up? Uh, or, or can I say it the way Luther says it? What do you do when the creek runs dry? Come on, somebody. What, what do we do when the finances get low? What do, what do we do when we get sick in our body? Is that right? Uh, and what I want to tell you is, is in those times that we got to learn how to trust God because in your dry brook season is when God is trying to stretch you. That's when God is trying to get you prepared for something that's coming a little bit later. That's when God is getting you ready to handle the adversities that are going to come. Um, but the question is, uh, well, anybody can, anybody can be stretched when you got, when you got a little change in your pocket. You know, when things are going well, when you know, you know, when, you know, when the job's going good and the car, the old hoopty is running good, you know, oh, y'all don't know what a hoopty is, but you know, that's one of them old cars that ain't much good, but that thing go to running good and it gets you back and forth to work. You know, it's rattling, but you put a little oil in it and it keeps, all of us can, you know, can praise the Lord when things are going well. But the question I raised tonight is what do you do when all of that stops? The car ain't running. Your body ain't doing good. Children not acting right. You know what I'm saying? And we're going through these storms. What do you do? Will you allow God? The question is, will you allow God to stretch you? What do you do when your resources are scarce and you don't know how you're going to make it? Anybody ever been there? And have you ever been there where you know you just said, well, Lord, have mercy. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I, I don't know what the Lord is going to do. I don't know if he's going to heal my body. I don't know if I'm going to get the promotion. I don't know if I'm going to get the job. Lord, have mercy. I've been beating my children. I don't know how much, how, how much more can I beat them. Amen. We just go through these crises. And the question is, what are we going to do when you have a dry brook experience? And one of the questions, one of the things, let me, maybe I need to give you a definition of what a, 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 a dry brook a, a bride, a dry brook situation is. It's those difficult times when things you need and want in life are scarce. A dry brook experience is, and yet in the struggle, and we left out a G, it's all right, but in the struggle, in the scarcity, we stretch to serve God anyhow. Here is what it is, is when I can be obedient and don't know how God's going to do it. Shana, did you get, did you get one of these? I'm sorry, there's some, somebody else is coming in. I think your mom, make sure that she gets one too, if you don't mind. I, I don't know, I saw somebody coming in. Oh, she got some. Okay, okay, okay. Thank y'all so much. Hey, thank you, y'all are so, y'all are so blessed. I'm almost proud of y'all. Got one for everybody. Thank y'all, amen. Yeah. So, so this definition of a, bride, a dry brook situation or, or when your creek dries up. It's those difficult times when things that we need and want in life are scarce, when we don't have enough to do all the things that we really want to do, you know, and we got to trust God. Anybody ever been in that place where you said to yourself, you know, Lord, if I'm going to get through this, you're going to have to do it. I just don't see no way for me to make it happen. So, God, I'm going to have to trust in you. Is that right? And let me tell you, all of us experience some dry brook situations. All of us go through those dry brook experiences. Uh, let me give you a few people. I got, you got some on your list right there. You, let me give you some examples. Abraham and Sarah. Y'all do know them, don't you? They had to wait 50 years before they received their seed of promise. Their first child, their first male child, Isaac. Abraham was 99. Sarah was 90. That's a stretch. Would you not agree? That's a stretch. Moses, after answering the call, after his burning bush experience, left his comfort zone. Listen, y'all, he went back into the land where he was a fugitive. Remember, he killed a guy and hit him in the sand and had to run. Now God is telling him to go back. And when he goes back, you know, he goes back and he tells Pharaoh, God said, let my people go. Now, that was a stretch to go back to where you were a fugitive. They, they could have just took his life. But why didn't they? Because God is still in charge. God is still running everything. Is that right? Um, then God delivered the congregation of bondage uh, out of Egypt. But Moses had to spend 40 years in the wilderness with these hard-hearted, hard-headed people. Is that right? Faithless people murmuring and complaining, asking, why did you bring us out here? Let me, let me tell you what they were. They were church folk. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and, and not only that, God delivered them. Get this. After dealing with him for 40 years, he still missed going into the promised land. Woo. What a pastorate. Amen. That's a stretch, y'all. 
Is that right? Look at Job. Job was an upright man. Is that right? Worship God faithfully. Uh, he was a model believer. But guess what, y'all? He lost everything he had in one day. He lost his cattle. He lost his children. He lost his finances. And he lost his wife. Am I right? All in one day. And Job said what? Job said, though he slay me, guess what? I, yet will I, tr I still got to trust him. Is it all right? That's a stretch. Can you just imagine losing everything you have in one day and then telling, you know what? She says, his wife says, go on and cuss God and die. Huh? Job said, no, I can't do it. I got to trust him. His friends come and tell him, Job, why don't you go on and confess your sins and God will forgive you and you'll be all right. Job said, but I ain't done nothing. Is that right? And the Bible says in, in chapter 42 of Job that when Job prayed for his friends, God gave him back double for his trouble. But let me tell y'all, it was some long, 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 long nights between the earlier chapters in chapter 42. Matter of fact, in chapters 23 through 25, I think it is, Job says, if I could find the Lord, I would give the Lord a piece of my business. I'd let the Lord know how I feel about this whole thing and all that he's done to me. And uh, he says, if I could just find the Lord, the Lord said, you ain't got to look nowhere. I'm right here. Amen. He says, he says, I'm right here. And guess what he did? And he says, not only that, not only that, not only that, Job, but before you start spewing off at the mouth, let me, let me remind you of a few things. He says, Job, where were you when I, when I hewed out the valleys? Where were you when I told the ocean don't come no further? Where were you when, you know, when I pinched off a piece of the sun, you know, and made it the night moon? Where were you when I named every star in the sky? Job, if you wasn't there then, I don't think you got too much you need to say. We need to stop and think about what God has done for us and what God has done in done period before we start getting too, you know, too, uh, uh, I call it above ourselves. Amen. So, so, so Job looked back and he said, you know what, Lord, I ain't got nothing to say. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Is there anybody here who made up your mind that I'm going to trust the Lord in spite of what I'm going through? I'm going to trust the Lord no matter what happens. I made up in my mind, y'all, that I'm going to stay with the Lord. Is that, is that all right? So Job stayed with him. Look at Daniel. Daniel is another one, right? Who was Daniel? Daniel was a prayer warrior. Is that all right? And Daniel, as he was, you know, in his first assignment, you know, uh, his first assignment was he got thrown in the lion's den because he was praying at noon. Wow. Some of us would never get eaten by the lions if we had to get thrown in the lion's den for praying. Amen. But, but he got thrown in the lion's den just for praying. They set him up. Is that right? But guess what happens, y'all? He gets in the lion's den and he lays on the lion's mane and go to sleep. How can that happen when God stretches you? Not only will God stretch you, God will protect you. Anybody witness? Then you know, yeah, yeah, I'm, I went through the storm and I'm going through some stuff. But guess what, y'all? All that I'm going through, because I'm obedient to God, I'm still covered. Uh, another, another, another writer put it this way. The blood still works. Amen. So, so, so Daniel was in that lion's den and he was now being stressed. Then there's Ezekiel, a visionary preacher. Y'all, y'all do know Ezekiel and Ezekiel, I think it is chapter 37. Ezekiel, he, he, he was assigned. His first church assignment was in a Baptist valley of dry bones. You know, Ezekiel went down in the valley and wasn't nothing in the valley but dry bones. The Bible says that God set him in the valley and said, this is now speak to the priest to the bones. Can you imagine how you must feel? Dry bones everywhere, land everywhere. And the Lord's telling you, preach to the dry bones. And the Bible says that Ezekiel begins to preach. Is that right? And bone begin to hook up the bone. And let me tell y'all something. When you do what, it's crazy when God tells you to do some things. But when you do what the Lord tells you to do, he'll bless you every single time. Is that all right? Sin you came on the bones. Is that all right? And he breathed. The east wind comes and he breathed on them and the bones come to life. Listen, let me tell you something. God will ask us to do some things we won't understand. But when we do them the way God says do them, every single time he'll bless you. Any witnesses in the house that God will bless you? And I close my examples of, of you know, having to be stretched with a, a young girl called Mary the mother of Jesus. Can you imagine what was going on with Mary? She was engaged. The, the, the wedding invitation had been put in the mail. Is that all right? 
the wedding dress had been all picked out. She was, she was set on go. Is that right? And then all of a sudden, she turns up pregnant. Oh, my goodness. And not only that, <laughs> the baby daddy had to be told. Oh, that's not a good terminology, the baby daddy. Uh, <laughs> when, when, when we hear that, that ends up not being good, don't it? Amen. You know, okay, when Joseph has to be told that she's pregnant, you know, and he has to tell her fiance that it's God's baby. That's a stretch. Can you only imagine how that conversa- how conversation had? And not only that, Joseph had to accept it. That's a stretch. I mean, I'm talking about a real stretch. And listen, listen, now, I was born at night. I wasn't born last night. And you're going to tell me that this is God's child? Come on, come on, come on, you know. But you know what? I, I get my shout on because she was telling the truth. Is that right? Is that crazy or is that crazy? God, listen, when we're going through, God is trying to stretch us. Can you imagine how she must have agonized over telling her fiance, I'm with child, but I ain't been with nobody? Yeah, right. <laughs> you, you know, can you imagine what he must have thought when she told him this far-fetched story? He said, yeah, right. You know, yeah, right. So, but I need to tell you, all of us sitting in this room have had some, some situations where uh, things dried up. Some things where they went dry. All of us have probably been in a relationship. You remember that first puppy love, love? You know, you were writing, up, and, and Deacon Raymond Harrell and, and Winnie Harrell, the only one I know, they, they wrote that note in the third grade and they stuck to it all, all the way up through 42 years of marriage. Amen. Uh, I, relationships have dried up. You said to yourself, I can't live without them, but somehow God made a way for you. Is that all right? Anybody ever been on your job and your job dried up? They say, look here, we got to lay you off. We're shutting down. Got to lay you off. You didn't make the cut. Is that all right? Anybody ever had a friendship that just dried up? I was, I was telling them at noonday today that I had some people in our former church, a girl in our former church, she and her friend quit speaking because her friend took what she thought was her boyfriend to the senior prom and not her. And they didn't speak for 10 years. Ain't that amazing? But then they saw each other in the grocery store and 10 years later they said, you know, why weren't we really not speaking? And, and the girl who went to the prom with the boy, she said, I didn't end up with him and you didn't end up with him and here we are now speaking about something that, and, the, and somebody else got him and gone. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? Sometimes, y'all, we start making excuses and falling out with folk over stuff that ain't worth falling out over. Is that all right? Okay, maybe that's not you. Anybody can remember when your bank account went dry? Ooh, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, okay. I can go back further than that. Can you remember when you didn't have one? Amen. You kept a little change under the mattress and, you know, you put pennies together and all that kind of stuff. But somehow God made a way for you out of no way. Somehow God provided for you. Is that all right? Anybody ever tried to go in in business and it didn't work out? It dried up. Some of us sitting in this room tonight have had our marriages to dry up. And if it hadn't been for the Lord, you know, we wouldn't have made it. Amen. So God has been good to us. Is that right? Uh, And so even, even, even today, In church, have you ever been through a season where you felt like your relationship with God was drying up? You just, you know, you just, you just didn't have, we just didn't praise like we used to praise. We just didn't give God the glory that he so rightly deserved. We wasn't praying as much as we used to pray. You know, we didn't want to come back to church after COVID, so it was so easy to sit at home in our pajamas and not had to give and not had to do anything. Our relationships will dry up. Is that right? So if you've been in a a dry place, the question is, what do you do when your creek dries up? What do you do when your brook runs dry? Is that right? Well, here, here, you're in the right place tonight because God wants to speak to us about when our brook dries up. Let me give you some context. In uh, the prophet Elijah, like many uh, in the scriptures, uh, was, was, came along in a sad time in, in Israel's history and the people of God who had been delivered out of bondage. I'm talking about the children of Israel, you know, and I'm talking about us too, the, the people of God who had been blessed by God and were living uh, in fine homes. I'm talking about us, amen. The people of God who God had blessed to drink from wells that they didn't dig. I'm talking about us, the people of God who was eating meat that they did not grow. 
the people of God, I'm talking about us who was inhabiting a land that was not their own. Now, all these have been blessed by God and because God had blessed them all of a sudden now, they had turned their backs on God. Come on, all of us know somebody that we can look at and say God really blessed them and then they turn their backs on God. Amen. Oh, can I, can, can I, I, I ain't talking about people in the street. I'm talking about folk in church. God has blessed us. Has he not? And then when God asks us to do some strange thing, we say, God, I just can't do it. You know, Lord, I, I don't know if I can make that happen. Is that right? So now they had turned their backs on God. And not only that, their leader, uh, King Ahab, had created an atmosphere that was in total rebellion against God. He, he, he had decided that I'm going with Baal. He, he had decided that we're going to turn from God and we're going to start serving materialism. You know, your clothes got to look right and your hair got to look right and you got to have them high dollar shoes on and all of that. And they, they, they had turned to secularism. They had turned to humanism and they had turned to demonic spiritualism. They were serving a rain God as their God. Is that right? Uh, look at the latter chapters. Uh, look at the latter verses of chapter 16 of, of, of the scripture we're in right now in First Kings. Look at the latter chapters of 16 in verse 30. He had mastered sin. Look at what it says in verse 30. Let me, let me just read it to you so you'll know. I don't, I, oh, that, these, are the master, these are the mistakes that he made. In verse 30, And Ahab, the son of Omar, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. He said he was the most evilest king that ever been in the history of the children of Israel. He was just, he mastered in sin. Amen. You ever seen folk who just, just, just evil? Evil spews from them when they talk evil. They just evil. And in verse, he married into sin in verse 31. It says, and it came to pass, if it has been a light thing for him to walk. Oh, is, that, is that where I'm at? Yeah. And, and to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the sons of Nebat, that he took the wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ebel, king of the Zidians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. They went from serving the God who brought them out of Egypt, through the Red Sea, and going to take them across the, across the Jordan. And now God has provided 40 years of manna in the wilderness. Uh, what? Water out of a rock. God had kept their enemies away from them. They left richer than when they, you know, than they ever been in their lives. And now all of a sudden they're going to turn their back and go against God. And all out of nowhere, y'all, Elijah steps in. He goes to the king's palace and, and he doesn't go. He doesn't go to the temple or to the church. He goes straight to the king's palace and he declares God's judgment on a wicked nation. Who is this guy, Elijah? Who is this, who is, who is this guy, Elijah? Where did he come from? He hadn't been heard about until he gets in the 17th chapter. Uh, he steps in into the story out of nowhere and he goes to the presidential palace. Listen to this, y'all. He goes to the presidential palace and pronounces a curse on the nation right in front of the king's face. Listen, I want you to put some, put some meat on the bone. The king could have said, off with his head. And that would have been the end of it, right? Or, or the king could have had him thrown in prison forever. Why didn't it happen? Because he was doing what he had been ordered to do by God. Come on, come on, y'all. Uh, we need some more Elijahs today to step up and declare what, 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 what the Lord says and do what the Lord is telling them to do. And look, look at what he says. Look at verse 1. Look at what he says in verse 1. This is what Elijah does. As the Lord God of Israel lives, is that right? Before whom I stand, there shall be no rain or no dew except at my word. As sure as the Lord of God of Israel liveth, and he says, I'm speaking for God. This is not me speaking. This is God speaking through me. Amen. And he says, there shall be no dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. In other words, he said to him, you know what? It ain't going to rain for the next three and a half years. Go tell your God, your rain God, Baal, to outdo this. Come on here, somebody. Our God is a powerful God. Is that all right? Can, can, you, can you imagine what boldness it must have taken for him to go before the king. He went straight to the king and said, hey, look, dog, got a word for you from the Lord. And you need to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. The Lord told me to tell you that it ain't going to rain until I say it's going to rain. 
Now you have your rain, God, do whatever you want them to do. But I'm telling you now, it ain't going to rain until three and a half years. And guess what, y'all? It didn't rain. Is it all right? Uh, but, but, you know, he goes on the king's turf to the presidential palace and talk like that. Is it all right? Uh, and, and he said, God says, we'll see who the true God of the rain is, who it is that allows it to happen. Is that right? How many of you know that when you speak the word of God from God, he gives you power to back it up? And I, and I did. I asked myself, why in the world didn't, didn't, didn't Ahab, King Ahab, just tell him, look, y'all, will y'all escort him out? Go out there and chop his head off, and we won't have to hear no more of this rain stuff and none of that. But let me tell you something. God has a way that's mighty sweet. God knows exactly how to handle Not Listen, let me tell you what had happened. God had already dealt with Ahab before Elisha got there. Look at here. Anybody ever been in a situation where you didn't know how it was going to turn out? You was going to meet or talk and you was going to meet some folk and you knew it was going to get ugly. You already knew that this ain't going to be pretty this Christmas when everybody come home and you know, uh, you know, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't going to look good. But when you get there, God has already got there before you got there and things work out. Yeah. And things work out and you didn't know how they was going. You were worrying about it up all night up in the morning trying to figure out, well, Lord, how you going to fix this? How you going to fix that? And by the time you got there, God had already fixed it. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you. You, you were worrying about going back and getting a bad doctor's report, and you go back and the man said, you ain't got nothing but a little author. <laughs> Am I right? You, you go and, and, and you worrying about how, how Lord, I'm, I'm feeling bad and I'm going through all of this. How in the world am I going to make it? I lost my significant other. I lost the breadwinner. How am I going to raise these children all by myself? But somehow God allowed you to get them all through college, get them all off and married, get them all off and doing good, and now they want to come back home and you say no. <laughs> Amen. But, but God did it, and we got to understand that it had nothing to do with us. It was because we were following and obeying God. When you obey, listen, y'all, when we obey God, we can't lose. Amen. We can't lose when we obey God. So there are four critical lessons I want us to look at uh, in this first part of, of, of this text. In verse three, we see the predicament. Is that right? Then the Lord came to Elijah and said unto him, leave here. Leave here and go tell Elijah. And God tells Elijah, now it's going to get real bad. Elijah had gone before the king, told the king what, what was going to happen. Now it ain't raining. And so, of course, it ain't raining. You know, he says, ain't going to be no water. And because there's not going to be any water, that means that food won't grow. So there ain't going to be no water. Ain't going to be no food. Is that all right? Folk going to start dying in the streets because they ain't got nothing to eat. They ain't got no water. The body's made up of 90% water. And if you don't get some water in you, you can't make it. Am I right? That's why it's called dehydration. Amen. But anyway, he says, you need to get up out of here. You know, folk going to start dying. And Ahab and Jezebel going to have an all points bulletin out on your head. And they're going to want to kill you because you prophesied that this is going to happen. He said, Elijah, it's time to burn the road up. But he says, don't worry about it. I got somewhere for you to go. Listen, if God puts you in it, if God brings you to it, God can take you through it. I'm telling you, y'all, y'all, you gotta, we gotta really learn to understand that if God brings us to it and it's of God, God's got a plan to take you through it. So he tell, he tell, he tells, he tells, uh, Elijah here, he says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go eastward. Is that right? I got a little spot down there that I prepared for you, uh, down by the brook called Sharif. Look at this it, right there in your text. And he says, when you get there, he says, I want you to stay there. And, and he says, if you go down there and you get there, you're going to be kept by God. Anybody ever been kept by God? In a situation that didn't look good, you know, it wasn't going well, but somehow God protected you. Some, some, sometime God, somehow God shielded you from all the stuff that was around you. Sometime God, somehow God didn't let you get caught up in the mess that was the mess that was the mess. Am I right? But he kept you. He says, look here, Elijah, go down by the brook called Sharif. And when you get down there, I'm going to keep you. 
Listen here. When we obey God, he's a keeper. Yes, he is. Amen. We, we ought to be shouting because he's a keeper. Yes, he is. Is that all right? So he goes down to the brook called Sharif, and then when he gets down there, the predicament is kind of bad. And he says, but guess what? When you get there, I, I, I got something. I got something for you. And you got to understand, you got to understand here that Elijah's name means Yahweh will provide. His name means that God will provide. But look, it's not until you get in uh, a dry brook situation that you are forced to see and know that God will provide. So sometimes you had to hit the rock bottom to know that God will provide because some of us think that we're doing it ourselves. Some of us think it's because of our education and some of us think it's because of our eloquence of speech and some of us think it's because of the name of our family and that's the end of our name. We think that that's what's causing us to thrive and survive. Let me tell you, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I need to tell you, it ain't got nothing to do about your name. Ain't got nothing to do with what side of the track you come from. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Am I right? You got, you got to understand, you know, Paul planted, Apollos watered. But listen, y'all, I don't care what you say, only God can give the increase. And, and, and when God gives the increase, he will provide. My God, Philippians, isn't that what it says? Shall supply all of my, anybody know he'll do it? Supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Is that all right? So, so you know, he, Elijah now is getting ready to be stretched because they're going to come after him. They're going to try to kill him. And God says, no, don't worry about it. I got you. Go, go down there to nowhere land by a creek that ain't nobody around and just go there because you know I'm, I'm a, I want to talk to you. Sometimes God has to separate you from the crowd. Am I right? Just to get your undivided attention. Sometimes he'll put us on our bed of affliction, lay us flat on our backs just to get our undivided attention. Sometimes God has to get you in a place where you can't make it by on your own. And it doesn't kill you, it's just to draw you closer to him. But that ain't what it looks like when you're going through, is it? That ain't what it feels like because you're being stretched. Am I right? Look, look, look. Stretching is not always easy. Watch, look, watch this right here. I, I, I take brother and I, and I start holding his knee and pulling his arm. And I start stretching him. It might not feel good, but in the morning when he get up, he'll be a whole lot more limber. <laughs> Either that or he won't get up. <laughs> but stretching is not always comfortable. Is that right? All the people we just talked about a while ago, uh, Sarah, Abraham, Moses, Job, Daniel, Ezekiel, Mary, all of them, they were stretched and it wasn't comfortable. But did it not work out for all of their good? At the close of the day, when you look, when you look, this is, this is me. When I look back over my life and I see all that God has brought me through, the word is through. I didn't, he didn't let me stay there. Look at y'all, he, he didn't let you die in your sin. Look, 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 some of us prayed, God, I just want to live to see my children get grown. Anybody ever prayed that prayer? God, you know, just, just, you know what? I prayed to get off the farm. And now when I, when I get older, I'm going back to the farm because I want to. Y'all hear what I'm saying? God has answered so many of our prayers and he's done so many things for us, y'all, that we got to realize that when he's stretching us, it's for our good. Is that right? So he's stretching. So the first thing we find the predicament he's in, uh, they're looking for him. They're going to kill him. Is that right? But he said, go eastward to a brook called Sharif. And he says, not only that, but when you get down there, here's the promise, y'all. The second thing, first is the predicament. The second thing is the promise. Look at what he says. He says, you will drink from the spring. And he says, a raven will bring you food. What? Wait a minute, it ain't rained in three years, so the creek ain't running. Am I right? Oh, but he didn't say that I was going to feed you from a creek. Y'all don't know what a spring is. A spring is where the water comes up out of the ground. Am I right? Out of the ground, and it begins to just run. It don't, it don't come because the clouds have let water fall from the sky. It's water coming. In the mountains, in the mountains, you see it a whole lot. Water just runs. That's why they call it mountain water. It's so clear and it's so crystal and it's so clear. He says, I will feed you. I will give you water from a spring. And he says, not only that, I'm going to make provisions for a dirty bird to bring you food. Help me, Holy Ghost. 
a raven, a dirty bird. It's going to bring you food every morning and every evening. And I can only imagine if I was there and, you know, and I was there and, and, and he was talking to me and he says, a bird going to bring you food. I say, Lord, can you bring me some pinto beans and some chocolate cake? I mean, you know, I appreciate you taking care of me. And, you know, but I, I'm going to drink the water and I thank you for that, God. But since you're going to have, a, a, you know, a bird bring me food, just tell him to go by and get me some pinto beans and get me some chocolate cake, you know, and I'll be all right. Is that right? So I don't know what yours would be, but, you know, I imagine, I imagine. Elijah says, wow, look at the promise of God. Cool spring water in the middle of a famine. Y'all got to paint the picture. You got to understand that it's the middle of a famine. Ain't nobody growing nothing. Ain't no water. Everything is dried up. It's dusty everywhere. And I'm drinking cool spring water and fresh pinto beans every day. Won't God provide? He says, God shall supply. Is it all right? Uh, you know, I'm getting these delights. The third thing is the place. So he did what the Lord told him. He did what the Lord told him. And he went. Real, 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 real big word. Look at said. So he went and did according to what the Lord, the word of the Lord. For he went. Not only did he go, but the Bible said he did what? He stayed by the brook Sharif. Amen. Which flows into the Jordan. Wow. Listen here. Sometimes when things get tough, you ever heard that old saying, you got to learn how to stick and stay? Yeah, sometimes when things get tough, when the word of the Lord comes to you and he don't tell you to move, you got to stay. Listen, listen to me, y'all. How many of y'all believe that you were assigned to come to this ministry, that this is where the Lord sent you? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I passed by 100 churches, but this is where the Lord's. And, and from Hillsborough, I passed by a lot more than 100. Am I right? But, but this is where God sent me. So when things get tough and the brook seems to be drying up and not going like I think they ought to go, the Lord says stay. That's what the word says. We just saw it. Is that right? He, he, first of all, he did what God told him to do. Is that right? And when he got down there, he said, look, I don't know what's going to happen. And, I, you know, I don't know how I'm going to eat and I don't know how I'm going to make it. But God had already commanded a raven to bless him. Can I help somebody in here? God knows exactly what our ministry is going to go through. He knows exactly what's going to happen. The question is, what will we do when we get into a tight situation? What are we going to do when, when things get tough and scarce? What are we going to do when the devil rears up his ugly head? Are, are, are we going to leave or are we going to stay right here until God says it's time to go? Look here, sometimes you got to be like, you got to do like Elijah did and go right to the presidential palace and say, look, this is what thus saith the Lord. We need a few more Elijahs that's willing to stand up and say, God is saying X, Y, and Z. This is what God is saying to me. And look, y'all, I need somebody to understand. We really can't move until God says move. Is that right? And if God sent you here, he sent you here for a purpose. Is it all right? So there was a predicament, there was a promise, and then there was a place. Let me tell you something about being, about staying. When you're obedient, it puts you in position to get blessed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How can I get blessed? Anybody, anybody, how can I get blessed in the middle of a lot of mess? How, how, God, are you going to bless me when, you know, we fighting in the house and, you know, we fighting on the job and it don't look like my children are being obedient. And Lord, sometimes I get crazy, you know, and he says, stand still and see the salvation of God. Stand still and watch God fight the battle because the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. That's what he says. He says to Elijah, stay, stay right there. And if you just obey me, I'm going to work all this out. Come on here, somebody. If you'll stand still and let me be God and you quit trying to be God, I'm going to work it all out for your good. Wow. Won't he do it? Anybody know he'll do it? Is it all right? Uh, and so then the, then the last thing is his provisions. The Bible says the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, every day, God's provisions are available to us. Has God not blessed every one of us? Yes, and look what, look what it says. He brought bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening, 
and he drank from the brook. Good gracious in the morning. Look at here. He's living in hog heaven. He had it made in the shade. Am I right? Why? Because he had did what God told him to do. But that's not why we came tonight. God's provisions are there for us. It's no fluke. God is still in the, listen to me, y'all. God is still in the miracle working business. We've been saying it ever since we've been saying the same God yesterday, today, and for, y'all ever heard that? Yeah, we, we keep saying it. So guess what? If God supplied for Elijah, and God, didn't God supply for our parents and our grandparents? Did you ever go to grandma's house and she didn't have something cooked? What do you say, Tanya? <laughs> Miss Johnson, she looked at you funny. <laughs> but but it, it's amazing. They didn't have much. They, they weren't very educated. But guess what? They had relationships with God that sustained them. And God made ways and God made provisions. And, and you know, back, back then, when I, I, I don't even know how to go way back then. But when I was growing up, my daddy did a lot of bartering. Bartering is when Mr. John got something that I need, and I got something that Mr. John need. We happened to raise pigs. We had 300 hogs. So if Mr. John wanted some, a ham, guess what? Mr. John had corn, then I'd bother Mr. John. My dad would just bother, you know what I'm saying? Mr. John raised cows, we raised pigs. We got tired of pork. So every now and then we wanted some beef. So we switch a, a cow for beef and, you know, and, 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 and help each other. You know, Miss Lois sold, am I right? Somebody else over there did something else. So what we would do, Miss Lois would make the children's clothes, amen? And, and, and then we'd give Miss Lois what we had to help her back. They didn't have a lot of money, but they had relationships with God. And look at us today. Look at us how times have changed. Most of us don't even know who our neighbors are. I'm talking about the people who live next door to you. Am I right? So it's hard to barter if you don't know who you're bartering with. Is that all right? But God here, I, I want us to understand that Elijah had reasons to move. And I imagine he says, look, I'm lonely out here. I'm ready to go. I, I need to get back to the city. God says, no, stand still and see the salvation of God. So he makes provisions. Is that right? And he, he's doing all that he can do. But then, y'all, something happened. Is that all right? Something happened. Look at Elijah. God is saying something is happening. Elijah's down there. He's eating fat. You know, he's living high on the hog. Ain't got no worries. Things are going well. His enemy is being whipped. God is taking care. Listen, not only that, when you do the will of God and you obey God, he'll handle your enemies. Wow. He'll handle your enemies. Who are you talking to, Brooks? I'm talking to Brooks. God will handle your enemies if you just obey him. Is that right? Any, anybody witness that God will, will take care of them a whole lot better than you can? Amen. Amen. God, God will do it. So as he's doing that, something begins to happen. He's feeling pretty good. Things are going well. You know, you know how you feel when the refrigerator full. You know, you got some stuff in the cupboard, got a little money in the bank. You done messed around and bought you a brand new spanking new car. You know, things are going good. Then, then all of a sudden you lose your job. Look at verse 7. The Bible says in verse 7, you know, uh, the brook dried up. Am I right? The brook dries up. And so when the brook dries up, now it's really time for us to be stretched. It was time for, for him to be stretched. And what do you do when your brook dries up? Come on, somebody. There are a few lessons I want to give us, and we'll, we'll find our way out of here. Uh, the first lesson, dry brooks require a word, a word, a word from the Lord. Three things that dry brooks requires. First, it re requires a word from the Lord. Is that right? Uh, the text uh, doesn't tell us. How, I don't know how long it was between verse 7 when, when they were in the famine, you know, and he was down at the brook called Sharif, and verse 8 when the brook dries up. I don't know how long that was, but I can tell you when it happened. It don't tell us how long it was, but it did dry up. Is that right? And then Elijah, God speaks to Elijah's dilemma. God finally speaks. But notice, Elijah stays put, right? And some stuff may be drying up around you right now, and you, you're tempted to make a move, but do like Elijah. Make sure you hear from God first. Makes you work, wait until the Lord tells you it's time to move. You know, uh, stuff can change pretty fast, you know. Stay put until you hear a word from the Lord. 
And the Bible says in verse one, uh, verse eight, the brook dried up. Then the word of the Lord. That's what it says. Then the word of the Lord. Look, look, that's what it says. Then the word of the Lord came. And that's what we got to look, wait for. We got to wait for the Lord to say something. Verse eight, verse eight. Look at it. It's in your Bible. I want you to see it. And the word of the Lord came to him. And the word of the Lord came to him. Now, you remember he's staying put. He's been taken care of. Now the brook dries up. And now all of a sudden, it ain't happening no more. The raven ain't coming. The water ain't running. You know, and I'm saying, okay, Lord, what, what are you doing? I, you know, hey, hey, I'm a little thin. You know, I'm a little, I'm a little parched. You know, I, and, but he says, then the word of the Lord came to him. Is it all right? He stays put until God tells him, until he hears from the Lord. Here's what I want to tell you. Don't move until God tells you to move. If God sent you here, don't let the devil run you off before God tells you to leave. Somebody got to learn how to stand. Somebody got to learn, look, look, Lord, 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 what are you saying? I, I, I hear what pastor is saying and I hear what they are saying and I, I hear all of this, but Lord, I want to know what are you saying? Lord, you speak to me. And when you speak to me, Lord, that's when I move. Until you speak, Lord, you're telling me, you're telling me to stick and stay. Is it all right? So that's lesson number one. Need to hear, the Bible says, in verse, then the word of the Lord came. Until the Lord speaks, don't move. Is that all right? Lesson number two, dry brooks require a worthy response to God. Uh, God sometimes will put you in a position where his plan doesn't make any sense. Can you just imagine me having to go down to a brook and sit down, you know, I'm out here all by myself and all that. Listen, listen to God's command now. Elijah says, yes, God, go from this dry brook to a broken widow. He says, look, Elijah, I, your time here at the brook has dried up. And now God speaks to him. The word comes to him, right? And he says, I got another crazy command for you. Now I want you to leave here and go to Zarephath. And I've commanded a widow woman there to take care of you. And Elijah says, what? How can a widow woman in the middle of a famine take care of me and she can't even take care of herself? Why didn't you send me somewhere where they had a lot of money? Send me to a nice hotel. Send me somewhere where they got a well. Send, send me somewhere where somebody's rich or they can take care of me. God says, no, I'm sending you to a, a widow woman at Zarephath. Listen, y'all, God will send us into some strange places. But look, guess what? That's where your blessing comes. Because you know, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, I got to leave here because the water ain't running no more. Got to leave here. The raven ain't coming no more. And so if God kept me here, why won't I obey him to go, obey him to go where he's telling me to go and do what he's telling me to do? So Elijah says, okay, God, I don't understand it. It don't make no sense. It looks crazy. But that's what you want me to do. That's what I'm going to do. Because guess what, God? I believe if you bless me back then, you're going to bless me right now, and you're going to bless me in the future. I don't understand how he does it. I don't, you know, and I think sometimes God uses strange things to bless us just to see if we'll be obedient. Wow. He says, go to Zarephath. There's a widow woman there that I've commanded to sustain you. Is it all right? Uh, the third thing, is dry bones or dry brooks require some willing vessels for God. You got to be a willing vessel for God. Verse 10, is that all right? God uses dry bone, dry brook experiences in our lives to accomplish what he has assigned us to do. His purpose, his purpose is for us. And so he arose, went to Zarephath, and look, look, y'all, check this out. And when he got to the gate, look at the text. When he got to the, to the gate, guess what was there? Indeed, a widow was there doing what? Now, isn't it? We think it's coincidental that the time that I arrive at the brook, there's a widow woman coming to pick up sticks. No, it's not coincidental. Let me tell y'all something. There have been times in your life when God had orchestrated some blessings for you and you didn't see them coming. And you didn't think you were going to get them from who you got it from. You didn't think there ain't no way they can bless me because they ain't got nothing. 
But he goes, and I can only imagine that this widow woman, they wasn't eating much because there was a famine. They wasn't drinking much. There was no water, no rain in three and a half years. So I imagine she's all dirty. She's got a son. Husband is dead. No more family members. But it just so happened. No, it didn't just so happen. It was preordained by God that at 3 o'clock, <clears throat> excuse me, this afternoon, that when I'm getting, when Elijah's getting to the gate, that she's there too. Oh, yeah. Listen, God's plan always works out. God's plan always come to fruition. All we got to do is do our part. Now, he had to be a willing vessel, so he had to leave the brook call Sharif where everything is dried up and, and go to God's, go to his next move, to God's next assignment. Am I right? So he, and so he goes. If he never would have went when God told him to go, he would have missed his blessing. Let me tell you something. God not only blesses us to bless us, but when he blesses us, he blesses us to bless others. The reason he blesses us is to be a blessing to somebody else. So guess what? The widow woman was there because she obeyed God. She's going to bless the man of God, but the man of God is there because he's obeying God, and he's going to be a blessing to the widow woman. Woo. But does any of that make sense in our logical mind? When we stop and look at it, why are you sending me somewhere? You know, why are you sending me back over there now? And why in the world are you sending me out here, God? And she says, I'm going to pick up some sticks to cook a meal, my last meal for me and my son, so we can eat and die. Woo! So she thought it was over. Look here, somebody's going through right now. You think it's over. It ain't over. It's just God preparing you for his next move. Somebody ought to give him a praise. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. That all that I'm going through right now, it looks like, you know, it looks like, it looks like, it looks like a dead end. You know, a dead end. Ain't nowhere else you can go. But let me just tell you, it ain't a dead end. It's just a sharp curve. All God is doing is preparing you for his next turn. And all you got to do is just, just keep, I know, I know you can't see the turn from back here. But just keep walking. Look, you, you don't need to know which way the road go until you get down there and need to go another way. But we want to stand back here and judge, and we want to stand back here and tell, you know, God, God ain't doing this, and God, God, God knows what he's doing. The question is, will you obey what he's telling you to do? And let me help somebody. He doesn't tell us that the road is, is a bend way down there. He tells you to keep walking. Just keep going. Just keep doing what I tell you to do. And when, and when you get down there and you need a turn, the turn is already there. God has already provided for us. Is that right? So he says, look, go down there and you know you got to be a willing vessel. Is that right? Um, and so the storm that you're in right now is not just so that you can be delivered. The storm is because there are some others around us that need to be delivered as well. Amen. I say this, and I say this wholeheartedly, that, that our ministry, y'all, we got to be careful. The devil is trying to take us back to where we just come from. Yeah. Devil is a lie. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. And, and, and we can ill afford to miss God and go back further than we just came. But disobedience will take us back. You remember I told you that when God sends you in the valley, he sends you in the valley to get something. Now, if we didn't get what we should have got back there, there comes a time where we have to go back in the valley again. Now, the question is, will I obey God this time or do we have to go back in the valley again? Y'all hear what I'm saying? He obeyed, the widow obeyed, and everybody was blessed. Here's what I can tell you. If we obey and do what God tells us to do, we are going to be blessed. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Well, 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 I don't know how long between verse 7 and verse 8. All I can tell you is God is a provider. God will do just what he says he's going to do. Does he do it in your time or my time? Certainly not. But is anybody here can witness that he's always on time? May not come when I want him to come. May not respond like I want him to come, want him to. He may not even send me to the people that I think I ought to go to. But when I obey, every single time I'm in position to be blessed. That's, that's, that, that's what I want us to get out of this. Is God says, obey me. It looks crazy. 
Oh, baby, Joe, I, I, I can only imagine how Job must have felt. I've lost everything. I can only imagine how Mary must have felt. A young girl hadn't slept with nobody. And I got to tell my fiance I'm with child. I can only imagine what it must have felt like. Daniel said, I've been praying three times a day ever since I can remember. Now I'm going to get thrown in the lion's den for doing what I've been doing. For doing right, I'm going to get thrown in the lion's den. But look, the next morning when they went to the lion's den, guess what? He was laying down there asleep. Listen, God, listen to me, y'all. God will take care of his own. Amen. If God tells us to do it, then that's what we need to do. Is that right? And he, and he says to this lady, you know what? Lesson three, you got to have some willingness and some, you know, you got you to you be willing to obey God even when, it's, when, it's, when it sounds crazy. Okay, let me go further. You got to be willing to obey God even when it is crazy. Amen. Sometimes God, I mean, you know, I, I, I tell y'all the whole story. When, when the Lord started telling me he wanted me to be a preacher, I thought he was really, you know, I, I know the Lord can't lose it, but I thought he had lost it. Lord, you can't want me. Lord, do you know who I was? Oh, no. Lord, do you know who I am? You know what I've been doing, Lord? You know how I've been living? Lord, why in the world would you want somebody like, I wouldn't listen to me. Why would anybody else listen? He says, I got a job for you. And you know what, y'all? I didn't want to accept it. I'll tell you the truth. I didn't. I, 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 I'm a preacher's kid. Grand, granddaddy was a preacher. Brothers were preachers. Uncles were preachers. And I've seen enough of church folk. In my unsaved condition, I remember, I remember very vividly my dad coming home crying because they didn't want the children to work in the church. And I remember telling my dad, you know, I was a young man and foolish. I said, Dad, if you just let me go to the deacon board meeting, I can say some things you can't say. You know, you know, I'm talking about serious, I'm talking about on the serious tip. You know, like that, you know, of course my dad wouldn't do that, but you know, I, I just thought I'd offer, you know, you can ask for forgiveness for me when I finish, but I can go in there, you know. But 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 listen, y'all, God has a plan. And God knows exactly what all of us are going to do. He knows how we're going to end up. We know, he knows when we're going to say yes. He knows when we're going to say no. Am I right? And so what we got to do is we got to learn how to trust God when things are tight. And let me tell you what God will do for those of you that are in the storm and you don't want to obey. God will tighten up the screws. How you know, preacher? For three years, he did it for me. Did it to me. I said, no, 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 not me. No, no, no. Tighten it up a little bit more. Am I right? No, I still, no. Well, okay, Lord, show me a sign. He showed me a sign. I still wouldn't go. He tightened it up a little bit tighter. And after a while, y'all, things will get so tight. And I don't know if y'all ever been here. Things will get so tight that you'll say, Lord, whatever it is that you want me to do. And y'all, after the Lord did all of that and showed me all of that and I went through all of that, then, then finally I said, okay, Lord, what is it you want me to do? And he told me, he said, go preach my word. It's just as clear as day. Go preach my word. And before I could get out of the bathroom, I said, Lord, can you give me one more sign? <laughs> I really did. And guess what? I walk out of the bathroom, the phone rings, and God, God heals, heals my son. He had a temperature. They was bringing him to the hospital. And they call and say, Ryan is fine. We don't know what happened. His temperature broke. He's outside playing. And before the lady could hang up, the voice in the phone said, now go preach. Listen, y'all, that's, that's my story. I don't, know about who, I, I don't know whether he called my daddy. I don't know if he called my granddaddy. I don't know if he called my brothers. I'm telling y'all, I know he called me. Now, have I always done what I should have, could have, and ought to have done to the best? No, I haven't. But I ain't never doubted in my 30-some years of preaching, I ain't never doubted that he called me. I know he called me because I was there. I was there, y'all. And, he, he, and, and let me tell you now, you may not think it, but he'll just keep on going. <laughs> Tighten it a little bit more. Oh, oh, you ain't going? Oh, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna do what I'm telling you to do? Okay. <laughs> Things get a little tighter, get a little harder. And Kim will tell you, we were sitting down there with a brand new house, couldn't get no power to it. Brand new house sitting down there, couldn't even get no electricity to it. I'm sitting on the steps crying, all ugly, tears running behind my face. And I'm saying, Lord, I, you know, Lord, I know I ain't, no, I ain't going, I ain't going. Got the driveway in. The driveway was a quarter mile off the road. We put all these gravel on it. The first snow come, all the gravel go out of sight. 
We, we got mud in. Some folk got snowed in. We got mud in. Had to park out there and walk out. Let me tell you something. God will tighten up the screws. My daddy told me that when he was being called to preach, he didn't want to preach. Said the cow drowned in a creek, and the creek wasn't even ankle high with water. God will tighten up the screws. Until, you know, you'll you, you figure it out after a while. You can't win. Your arms ain't long enough to box with God. So I, I encourage all of us, just do what God has called you to do. Be who God has called you to be. And guess what? When I start doing the right thing, stuff start, God start opening doors and making ways. And, and I'm telling you, been doing it ever since. So I ain't got no choice but to follow God. And guess what? You don't, you don't have any choice either, except to hear this number right here. And that, that, that sound is going to start reeking in your spirit. When you don't do what God tells you to do, you, you're going to hear something going. And you say, oh, Lord, that's pastor. There you go again. He, he ain't nowhere around. <laughs> is it all right? So Elijah, after he travels to Zarephath, and the widow woman is there, and, and you know, um, God sends Elijah to this woman and he says to her, and I got, I got to get y'all out of here. I'm over time. I got to get you out of here. Um, he says to her, ma'am, oh, would you make me a cake first? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen real good, y'all. God has an order that you can't undo. He says to her, he says, make me a little cake first. And she says, sir, I don't have but a little bit of meal. And I'm talking about a little bit of oil in the cruise. And I really, 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 really don't have very much. And he says, I know, ma'am. Let me tell you something. God ain't going to never ask you to give what you ain't got. But God will ask you to share what you do got. That's not good English, is it? But y'all understand what I'm saying. He will tell you to share what you do have. Am I right? It ain't much. And I'm going to make my final meal that me and my son might eat it and die. Elijah says, I know. I got it. But make me a little cake first. That's what the word of God says. Make me a little cake first. Listen, he says, I'm not asking you for a three-layer chocolate cake like pastor wants. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm asking you for. All I'm asking you to do is share what you got with the man of God first. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Elisha was God's prophet. God had shown him over and over and over again that he's going to take care of him. So he goes and he asks this lady, he says, just make me a cake first. And guess what? Because God had already dealt with her before he got there. She was at the gate at the right time. Her spirit was right. She was in the right spiritual frame of mind. And she says, okay. And I can only imagine that because she didn't have very much, I, I, I can only imagine that she says, you know what? I'll give the man of God what I was keeping for myself, and I'll give my son the rest. And I'll just die earlier, and it'll be all right, because my son and the man of God are going to be all right for a little while longer. Listen, y'all, we got it all twisted. Don't get it twisted. God knows what he's doing. And let me tell you something, that there are some things that the man of God knows and understands that he don't tell you. He doesn't, he doesn't ask the committee. Come on here, somebody. And, he's, and she says, okay, I'll do that. And the Bible says that when she does it, something miraculous happens. Am I right? Says, and, and the man of God says to her, because you were obedient, the oil is going to keep coming in the cruise and, and, and the oil is going to keep coming in the vessel and, and, and the bread and the meal ain't going to run out until it rains. What? I'm going to make my last little meal and I ain't got much and I'm going to think me and my son are going to die. But now every day when I go to the barrel, it's meal in there for me and my son and the man of God to eat. And, and, you know, there, there, there's enough oil in there that, that, that me, my son, and the man of God got enough every day. God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory simply because she was obedient. Simply because he knew what to do when the brook ran dry is wait on God, am I right? And watch God supply my needs again. Listen, y'all, you can say what you want. If you're in line with the will and the word of God, God's going to take care of you. 
Now, are you going to have the sacrifice? Every now and then, you got to show God that I'm willing to trust you, God. Am I right? Abraham goes up with his son, am I right? To offer him as a sacrifice. And it ain't until he gets him on the altar. And the son said, Daddy, I see the wood, but I don't see no sacrifice. Isn't that right? Y'all know that story. And he says, he says, but God will supply. And they go up on the mountain, they lay his son up on the altar. And I don't know why the boy wasn't kicking and screaming. I don't know why in the world he just going to lay up here and say, okay, Dad, if that's what you want, no, Pop, you get on there. I'm going to wait. But he, he gets there, and he draws back the knife. Listen, draws back the knife with every intent of taking his son's life. Am I right? And the angel says, stay your hand. I know I can trust you. Here is the question I leave you with tonight. Can God trust you? Can you allow God to stretch you to the point where God, I don't know how you're going to make it happen, but I'm going to trust you to make it happen. Is that all right? Can God trust you? Can God trust you to be obedient enough when things, you know, got to sacrifice your own? Yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on now. How many of you put our children? No, no, you know, Lord, you know, I hope you don't push me that far. I hope I would make the right decision, but I hope you don't push me that far. Tell the truth. That's, that must be hard. And God says, stay your hand. Guess what? There's a ram caught in the thicket over there. Take the ram. And Abraham, go, I can only imagine going back down the mountain after they had sacrificed the lamb and Abraham and Isaac are talking. And Abraham said to him, boy, if you don't ever hear nothing else, remember, God will supply your every need. God always have. That's where that saying comes from. There's always a ram in the bush. God always has a ram in the bush. All we got to do is be obedient and let God stretch us. Now, can you only imagine how Isaac and, and Abraham's faith was going down, was totally different than when it was going up? Listen, there's some folks sitting in this room and some folks listening to me right now via YouTube that God has done that for you. You didn't know how you were going to get through. You didn't know how you were going to make it. And somehow God stretched you. Amen. And, and that little, you know, we were talking about it today. I remember the time when $10 worth of gas would let me ride for a whole week. Now I get two gallons, maybe. <laughs> Am I right? But, but guess what? How many of us are still riding? No matter how high the gas get. Am I right? No matter how much we had to supply, you know, we had to burn. Now it cost me $110 to put, fill up my truck with gas. But guess what? He keeps on blessing me, and I keep on riding. Is that right? He keeps on supplying my need. He keeps on making ways for me, and he keeps on opening doors for me, y'all. And so guess what? I got to keep on giving him glory. I got to keep on giving him praise. I got to keep on telling God, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life. Thank you, Lord, for how you're blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for me. Is that all right? And look, look, let me tell you, how, let me tell you why she got blessed. She got blessed because she gave out of her need. She gave out of obedience. Hear me, hear me. She gave because God had already spoke to her. And I'm sure she had some conversation. You want me to do what? I, I've commanded a winter woman down there to sustain you. Lord, how can I sustain him and all I got is a little bit of oil and a little bit of meal in a barrel? What do you mean take care of the man of God? Who is he? Don't he put his britches on one leg at a time like I do? Who, 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 what, what in the world? Do what? Lord, ain't that joker, ain't that joker from Hillsborough? Well, let the people from Hillsborough take care of it. Hmm. But when we obey God, we put ourselves in position to be blessed. She gave out of her need, and she had to sacrifice, y'all. Can you only imagine how she had to sacrifice in order to make this happen? And God says, guess what? I'm stretching you. But can you imagine for the next, ever how long it was between verse 7 and verse 8, that every day she kept getting blessed out of the, out of the barrel? And out of the cruise of oil, it kept, it kept on coming. It's like the woman who, who's, whose husband died and they were going to take her two sons into slavery. And he asked, he asked the woman, what you got in the house? She said, I ain't got nothing but some pots. She said, go get them and go get all you can get from all your neighbors and, and just go collect all the pots you can go, all you can get. 
and I want big pots. And he goes in and he closes the door and, and the oil starts running and she fills up all the pots. All the pots are full and the oil still running. She's trying to catch it, you know. And, and, and he says, son, bring another pot, bring another pot. He said, mama, ain't no more. And the man of God says to her, now take it and go sell it and pay your bills and live off the rest. God will supply if we'll just obey. God will supply if we'll just get out of our own personal preferences and what we want and what we desire and what we think and how we feel and say, God, your will, not mine. Amen. Sometimes I get in my own way. Hmm. Sometimes I get in my own way. I'm through. I'm done. Uh, the oil kept coming. The flour kept, kept coming, kept pouring. Is that right? Uh, the widow kept on living. I, I implore you tonight. God wants to bless us but he has to stretch us and we have to serve more in 2024. We got to serve more. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just giving money. I'm talking about, we got to, we got to love each other. I've been accused of, of talking too much about love. I really have. And that's okay because evidently you don't, you ain't got it yet. If you, if you think I talk too much about it, you just ain't got it yet. So what you need to do is get it. Love is how we serve God. Loving each other is how we let God know that we're his servants. Amen? So we're going to keep on loving. Is that all right? We're going to keep on hugging. We're going to keep on giving God the praise and the glory. And we're going to stand still until God says move. Is that all right? And watch God stretch us. But as we are stretched, watch God grow us. And as we grow, watch us love each other and get in position to be a blessing to somebody who don't know Christ. There are those who's going to come in and look at us and decide whether they want to follow Christ by what they see in us or how we act or how we respond. And what, what, we, what do we do with the word of God when God tells you something? Hey, let me ask y'all this and I'm done. Does, does, does God talk to y'all? Do y'all do really believe that God really talks to you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, he, that, he, that, he, that he lets you know that it's him? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and sometimes, sometimes I just get in the word and it get crazy. And the Lord will just tell me, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's me. We keep waiting. We keep waiting for the earthquake to shadow. We keep waiting for all these big things to happen. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the storm. The Bible says he came in a still, small voice. Am I right? And Elijah told his servant, go up there and look out toward the mountain, look out toward the sea and tell me what you see. And he said, I don't see nothing. He said, go back seven times. And every time he went back, he came back and said, I don't see nothing. But he went back the seventh time. He said, a little small cloud about the size of a man's hand. Is that right? And, and, and guess what? The rain came from all of that little small cloud. Obedience is paramount in our serving God. And if we're not obedient, we're putting ourselves in position not to be blessed. We're putting ourselves in position to go back to where God has delivered us from. The children of Israel said, why can't we go back and die with graves in Egypt? Why did you bring us out here to die? He says, I didn't bring you out here to die. I brought you out here to take you into the promised land. I brought you out here to show you the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Love you all. Questions, comments, suggestions, ideas. Yes, ma'am. I bless the Lord at all times. Mm -hmm. I don't need Okay. Amen. Okay. No, I, I, I can say this. I bless the Lord at all, all times. Mm -hmm. All of his goodness and, and his mercy. And I want you ladies to know I love y'all so much. Oh, you don't love us? Oh, okay. I was just saying. Okay. However, last week, between
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Our, our testimonies avail as much. Amen. And we had a lady that was in Hillsboro. We were at the restaurant eating in, in the community where I live at the little store there. And the lady came in. Just like, just like you said. And she was talking about, she says, well, I'm, I'm going down to the shopping center and shop. I said, you in Hillsborough, ain't no shopping center <laughs> in Hillsborough. And the lady kept talking, and eventually she just fell out. And so, we, you know, she, she kind of got weak and laid on her. And so we started talking to her, and, and we didn't know who the lady was. But the Lord would have it that she would stop in the store where we were. And so she said, well, if y'all just take me home, I'll be all right. I said, well, ma'am, where you live? Hadn't seen her, me and my brothers, and we were sitting there. And so long story short, y'all, I ended up taking her to the emergency room because I didn't know what was going on. We got there, and we found out that the lady had been missing for seven days. She had driven from South Carolina, didn't know where she was, thought she was going down the street to the to the to the to the to the mall to shop and she was in North Carolina and had a had a warrant they were looking for her and everything and when we took her to the emergency room and God said with me, shared with me, that's how I'll protect you. She was safe. Came back, came back and told us thank you. When she got out of the hospital, her and her children came out to the house, found us, came out and thanked us because she could have stopped at a bad part of town. She could have stopped on the side of the road. She could have had a, a, that same sickness that could have happened while she was driving. Tell somebody, but God. The very same thing you're talking about, God delivered it. God delivered you. God made a way. God says, I'm going to protect you even though you don't know what you're doing. God knows what you're doing. And guess what, y'all? We can't thank him enough for stuff like that. And we don't have to wait until it happens. We can thank God for her. We can praise God with her. Praise God for her. Praise God that God was with her. Thank God that we had enough prayers of the saints to cover her. I wish I had somebody in here that would just tell God, thank you. Because guess what, y'all? It can happen to any of us before we get out of here tonight. It can happen to any of us. But guess what? His grace and his mercy. The prayers, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous does what? Y'all, it, it, we got so much to do. We got so much work to do. Amen. And we got to love each other. Brother John. Oh, this is good to me. <laughs> oh, God be the glory. I thank you for you, for the word tonight, Pastor, that be a lot of faith. Uh, we stretch to uh, get God's word out. Uh, Daniel 6, 22, one of my favor. Mm -hmm. uh, King Darius went to the to this, uh, cage early that morning. Mm -hmm. He asked Daniel, said, Lord, you sir, continue to have me save you from the lion mouth. That's right. And he said, yeah. He said, my God has sent the angel. Mm -hmm. and closed the lion mouth and it did me no harm and before you old king Derek, I had did you no harm but I was just wondering uh, why he had to go through all that stuff <laughs> but uh, it's good to know that it's yeah. good to know that and I thank the Lord for the lesson it, it do build our faith and we're strong and strong and we look for the uh, the next uh, challenge come up see if we're going to stick and stay out we're going to fold for nothing yeah. so I'm, 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 I'm there with the Lord I'm going to stay with it you gonna stick gonna, and stay? Don't stick and stay. I ain't going nowhere. So, uh, and uh, my advice to myself: we continue to study God's word that be a lot of faith stronger. I mean, just hearing the pastor preach thing, and you go home and you need to open your Bible up instead of for yourself. Most of the time, I get up uh, ninety percent of the time. I get up four o'clock in the morning. I do my study, and I had to to keep myself straight. And and God give you power. And when things come to you, you you wonder how you're going to handle it. You know, I know how I'm going to handle it. I'm going to lean on God and understand it. Right. I ain't going to lean on my own understanding. It's in the Word. It's in the Word. Proverbs 
third uh, chapter of Field uh, of 7 verse. So, okay then. God bless you, man. Amen. Thank you all so much. Anybody else? Anybody else before we proceed to close? Amen. All right, I'll just take two microphones. <laughs> Amen. Uh, thank you all again for coming out. Thank you that, that we love God enough to come out and want to study and learn his word. And uh, just keep praying one for another. Let's keep praying for our ministry. Yeah. Keep praying that God will continue to show us what it is he would have us to do, where it is he would have us to go, and who it is he would have us to love. Amen. Amen. Shall we stay in God? Amen. Songwriter said, I trust in God wherever I might be, on a mountain bleak or out on a stormy sea. Though billows may roll, he keeps my soul. I'll trust in God wherever I might be. So, God, we say thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for how you've blessed us. Thank you, Lord, for those who've sacrificed to come out on this chilly night to give your name the praise and the glory that you so rightly deserve. Thank you for your word that's gone forth, God, praying, Lord, that we'll be stronger going out than we were when we come in. Praying, God, that we know what to do when our bride drook our dry brook situation arises. We know what to do when, the, when it's time for us, God, to just stay and, ho and wait on you to tell us which way to move. We know what to do, God, when it's time to move and which way to move and how long to move. And we understand, God, that the battle does not belong to us, but the battle belongs to you. So, God, have your way in all of our lives. Have your way in our families. Have your way in our church or your church. Have your way in this community. Have your way even in this country, in this world. Lord, we declare and decree that you are the Christ. Yeah. Your will is going to be done. We're going to do it. We're going to praise and bless your name because you created us to give you the praise and the glory. And God, we're going to lean not to our own understanding, but in all thy ways, we're going to acknowledge that you are the Christ. You are God all by yourself, yes, and we are not. So, God, thank you for using us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you, God, for entrusting us with this word. And help us, God, to live so you can use us anywhere and anytime. As our servants' prayer, we pray. And those who love God, just shout it with the pastor. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God a praise.